this is Gigi with Gigi's Fabric Shop, home of Juki Junkies, and today's video is going to be all about how to use an overcasting stitch on a Juki sewing machine. So, why would you use an overcasting uh, stitch? Pretty much to prevent any fabric from fraying. So, for example, if I was going to, let's say, sew a pair of pajama pants for the kids for Christmas, um, where the inseam is at, I want to reinforce that stitch. So instead of doing two straight lines, I would use an overcasting stitch. I would also use an overcasting stitch when I need to use a serger, but I don't have a serger, so I have to, you know, use the overcasting stitch, which kind of works like the uh, serger. Another reason to do it um, is definitely to prevent fraying. Sometimes we'll use fabrics that are prone to fraying, so you want to use an overcasting stitch. Um, let's see, to reinforce, like I said, um, for a pair of pants and no need to sew two straight lines. So let's jump in today. I have the Juki DX7. So we're gonna come over here and I actually, before we um, introduce you into the machine, I wanna show you a little cheat sheet that I created. Um, this is on page 43 for the Juki DX7. Um, and this is what I came up with. And if you guys wanna take a screenshot of this, this is a great way for you to not have to go read your manual and really, um, be introduced to the four options of the overcast stitches on the DX7 um, without having to open up that manual. So over here I have, the reason I have door number one, two, and three, those are our, what I call our filing cabinets over here. So um, it's kind of like a door to enter into the stitch world of the stitch chart that is above. But so anyways, this is door number one, this is door number two, this is door number three, and then I call this my quick selection area. So let's dive in and break these down. So we have four stitches to choose from. Um, and the very first one is going to be on door number one. I'm gonna come over here and basically, this is door number one. These are your quick selections, okay? So if I am on this little stitch right here, I, I mean, on this little door, I'm gonna click this and number seven. Now, keep something in mind that the 07 here, okay, is a reflection of this seven. So don't let it confuse you because if you scroll all the way up over here, you're going to see number seven as seven over here. I don't know why it says 07, but it's confusing. But as, as, as long as you are in that quick selection area, you're definitely selecting the right piece. Another thing that I want to introduce you to is how what reads here. So this right here is your stitch that you've selected. This is the foot that you will be using. And then this is what your stitch looks like. Here is your width, which could be adjusted here, and your stitch length. Today, I'm not gonna adjust anything. I'm just gonna show you how to use these stitches and what they are for. The first one, which is the quick selection, which is just a quick one, is going to be just for a general use. So I already did that one. And let's see, where did I put it? It was number seven. So this is what it looks like. Okay, and that's nice because if I was going to wash a, you know, a dress, a pair of pants, it's going to fray and this will prevent it. So first thing, make sure you have the right foot. I've already put my overcasting foot and this is what she looks like. You also want to always make sure that you check that foot, but also that you, after you select, you're going to be moving your hand wheel and making sure that that needle is not going to hit that foot, okay? So I can see it right there. And I always do that, um, unless you are confident enough where you've been doing this for a while now, okay? So I have my fabric here. This is just regular fabric. And I want to show you this little guide right here. Let me get a little right here. See this guide? This is where you want to line up. You want to line up your fabric right on the edge of this, okay? So I'm gonna bring this foot down. And the fun part is, <laughs> I was thinking I was on a mechanical machine and I was reaching out for the handle. So I'm gonna come over here and, oh my gosh, my needle's not threaded. Is it? Oh yes it is. Hold on a second, guys. Hold on a second. It's kind of hard because we're filming and so I'm not at my normal angle. 
so it kind of makes it hard to see. Okay, so I'm gonna line up that fabric right there. I'm gonna put my foot down, and my job is just to guide that fabric. You want to uh, sew slowly, okay? Not super fast. And you're just going to guide her to be along that edge the whole time. You don't want to peek towards the right. You want to stay within the left side of that guide. Kristen, go ahead and lift that up a little bit and get really close up here so they can see it. It's kind of funny because I'm watching the fabric, but I'm also watching the camera. And I'm like, okay, which one do I look at first? Go a little bit faster and you guys can see what it does. I've used this um, like when making a Halloween bag, if I wanna um, kind of just reinforce that bottom. Perfect. So that is what number seven looks like on door number one. And now let's try door number two. This one here is going to be this stitch over here. It is this little icon right here. You're going to make sure that you select this icon before you go into number seven and it's 07. So we come down over here. I'm going to select door number seven and if you notice it has all these little icons. So I want to scroll through it like this or I could use this too. And there is what I need right there. I'm going to hit OK. I'm in that filing cabinet per se and I'm going to hit 07 hit OK and I'm in there now. Now confirm that it's foot C and that's what my stitch is going to look like. And in this one, if you notice on my chart, this one is for medium to heavy fabric. So I have some denim fabric here, which is pretty thick. Um, and then let's just put it up there, line it up. The key to overcasting is to always put that fabric on that edge of that bar of that guide and I'm I've always been fascinated how the thread kind of jumps over that little bar right in there I better not get too close and how it just kind of seals it you know it's like seal the deal babe seal it okay now let's use our cutter and voila! look at that does that remind you of like a pair of pants when it's surged. So here is the kind of like that surge look without having to use the serger, you're using the overcasting stitch. And that is 07 in cabinet number two, door number two. Okay, and that one is still on foot C. And now we're gonna jump into still in the door number two, which is this little pink icon. But now number eight is the second overcasting stitch. And this one is used for lightweight fabric. So this is for that dress, that chiffon. Um, so I have this gorgeous rayon fabric. Notice the drape, it's nice and soft and just drapey. And now it's not going to be as heavy because it's light fabric. I'm lining her up across that edge and oops and see, see right there. You see that bar? That's where I want to um, line that up. So I've taken the camera from Kristen now, so I'm double duting here because she can't get this angle because she would be in my <laughs> in my breath, literally. But I want, whoops, I gotta keep an eye on both. Okay, Kristen, I'm gonna let you take over. I just wanted them to get that angle. All right, and for video purposes, we're gonna go a little bit faster. I know this baby can handle it. Um, my kids during summer camp, well, and my adults did a great job using the overcasting stitch. Um, I couldn't get everyone to get on a serger, so the kids used their overcasting stitch and they were fascinated by it. Again, always remember that you check that foot that is re being requested by your um, screen over here. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. And super, um, and also there's a little bar back here and that's, it, it. when you slide it, you wanna slide it out, not to the side because the fabric can get caught in there. Look at this, that's just perfect. It's beautiful and I'm using Glide 40 thread. Um, it has a beautiful sheen to it and it is 
definitely going to work for this pretend dresser skirt that we're making and it's not going to fray once I wash it because I've created this gorgeous overcasting stitch. And now the last one. Oh, do we really have to stop? Because the fact that I'm sewing is just delightful. <laughs> um, we're going to go into, what door are we doing? Oh, door number five. I forgot we have door number five. So door number five is going to be for a general use. Um, on this one, I'm going to say it maybe twice. It's not foot C. It is A. Remember that. And it even says it in the manual, like, hello don't forget. So I'm going to take out foot C, okay? And this is what foot C looks like, okay? There's that little guide where you needed to kind of like butt it there, and there's that little bar that I was telling you guys, okay, that the fabric could get stuck, so you want to slide back and not to the side. And now I'm just going to grab my standard A foot, okay? And that's going to be for the zigzag. So I'm going to come over here and just it in there. One, two, three. Voila! I'm going to lift and I have my fabric prepared over here just for a general use. So why would I select this? Well really it's just a matter of preference with the very first one I showed you in this one as far as the general use of it. So it's like what do you want your stitch to look like? And so this is a the A foot and it just looks like a zigzag. Now earlier I was like wait a second what do I butt this to okay you're going to be butting this to the center let me show you here you're going to be this is going to be now taking place of your bar okay so keep in mind again this is foot a and not c I might have said c there a second ago did I say that <laughs> and oh my goodness Kristen you caught me <laughs> I forgot to select 05. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> Let's select 05 and really see what that one looks like. <laughs> so that's why it doesn't look that great. Okay. <laughs> So let's cut this really quick. See, this is the real deal, guys. This is not rehearse. This is just do it, do it, and get it done. Where is my rotary cutter? Where did it go? Oh, there we go. Hold on a second, guys. Okay. So let's see. <laughs> Kristen kept pointing to something. I'm like, what? What? What did I say? What did I do? <laughs> so it was definitely 05. So if you look over here, notice how it switches to A. Thanks, Kristen, for catching that. Show them how to do it again. How to yep, so there. let's see how we get there. So let's pretend like we were over here. So to get to door number two, I'm going to come over here. And it does have that icon next to that stitch chart up top. So I have selected it already. I could just hit OK. And then I'm going to go 0, 5, and hit OK. And it does default like quickly, like it'll select it. But if you want to go quicker, you could hit OK. OK? And then I just come over here. And I'm going to place my fabric again where the edge is in the center of the opening that is in that center opening of A. Again, I'm doing this with a camera like right in my face, so I might not do it perfect, but you guys get the idea, okay? Fun. This definitely makes me want to stop working today and just go sew. And there you go. Very nice. So I hope this was a helpful video for you guys. Um, this is a great way for you to reinforce your fabrics, avoid that fraying, and especially avoiding those two stitches that are just straight. Um, and this is a good complement um, or a, a good way to get into the surging world without having a serger. So if you liked our video, please make sure you like below, make sure you subscribe, and don't forget to watch us every Sunday when we release a new video. In the meantime, visit jukijunkies.com.